And on this Easter, we focused in on Christ's living mediatorial work as our intercessor. Um, But inevitably, questions that come up at Easter are ones like these that uh, came up regarding the statements about our resurrected body in 1 Corinthians 15. And uh, when we think about the uh, reality of Christ's resurrection and our future resurrection, it's questions like this that sometimes call into uh, uh, at least a state of confusion what people are anticipating regarding the resurrection body. This is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 when it's describing the kind of body that we're going to have. And and I, I've often taught on these phrases because they're so good in helping us get a, uh, a biblical perspective on what our resurrected bodies will be like. But one of the questions has to do with the last phrase here. The, the first three are, it's sown perishable it's raised imperishable, it's sown in dishonor, it's raised in glory, it's sown in weakness, it's raised in power, and those are all understood in the way we have taught this in a traditional sense of a a, uh, living, imperishable, powerful, beautiful body that is uh, going to inhabit eternity. It's the last one that often raises questions where it says it's sown a natural body and it's raised a spiritual body. Uh, That phrase right there leads people back sometimes to that vision of a uh, translucent body that's uh, it's not concrete, it's not it's not tangible, uh, and yet that's not the picture here. The contrast, and it's been my contention, uh, go back to some of our former Resurrection Sunday sermons. Uh, my contention that the the contrast in this text has to do with the uh, the nature of that body. We've just painted a picture of of the um, nature of the body being uh, beautiful, being powerful. It's all these good things, but then we think about the problems with our bodies now. It is that uh, fleshly weakness. As, as Jesus said to the disciples falling asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's something about our um, our fleshy, uh, fallen humanity that is uh, not only tired, but it has a propensity uh, to be lazy, to, uh, to do the wrong thing. And Christ is often contrasting for us, and certainly the apostles, the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And that contrast here is one that is being described. Our bodies won't have the propensity for sin. The bodies, our bodies, our resurrected bodies won't have the uh, uh, the tendency to do wrong. But as it relates to the concrete, tactile, real, tangible essence of the resurrected body, as it says earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, Christ is the template. He's the pattern. He's the first fruits. We've got to go back in our minds to Luke chapter 24, where in that text, Jesus appears in a resurrected body to his disciples. And as they think they see some kind of spirit, he says, no, no, no. This is uh, Luke chapter 24, uh, verse 38. He says, uh, why do these doubts arise in your minds? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I. Touch me and see. Uh, For a spirit doesn't have uh, flesh and bones as you see that I have. Uh, NAS translates that ghost. A a ghost. Some uh, unembodied, uh, disembodied spirit. Some non-real or non-corporal body doesn't have flesh and bones. And he says, you see that I have that. That's the resurrected body. And then he shows his, his hands and feet. And then he takes it one step further and he says, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and he ate it in their presence. That picture of eating real food, which by the way is how the New Jerusalem is described, the eternal state is described in Revelation 21 and 22. Uh, We will be uh, in real, tangible bodies. Even though that last phrase may lead us perhaps to think of some translucent spirit body, uh, it's not a spirit body, it's a spiritual body. It's a body that is directed by a redeemed spirit, and it doesn't have the kind of fallen principle of humanity to seek after evil or to be lazy or any of those things. It is a body that is no longer a natural body. It is a it is a body directed by the spirit, which is the real task in the Christian life. It is, as Galatians says, that struggle because of our fallen flesh. There is a battle going on. We can't do what we want. We can't do what we please because there's a war going on between spirit and flesh. That war will be gone in the new body, but the body will be real. You can touch it. It'll have flesh and bones and and it'll be able to eat and and digest food. Uh, That's the reality of the resurrected body. And while we didn't teach on that this year at at Compass, uh, it's certainly something that as it was raised, it needs to be addressed in our minds that our focus and our hope is 
to have the kind of resurrected body that Christ had, uh, a real tangible body, which helps us in so many ways. Because sometimes we think this earth is the real deal and, and, and the next life, well, that one's kind of, I don't know, cloudy and fuzzy. It's not at all. Very concrete, very real. God is going to give us a new heavens and a new earth. And we're going to live on that new earth in the new Jerusalem. And, uh, and, and we're going to experience everything the way it was intended to be. So we look forward to that. And uh, we don't want to be um, misunderstanding or, 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 or led astray in, in thinking wrongly about that passage there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15.